All righty. Aloha on Lay Stingrays. I hope it's up and running. I hope you can see my cat back there in the background. Hi, Jasper. So I have a couple of books to read to you guys today. Um, first of all, let me tell you that I've missed you guys so much, but my kitties sure have been happy that I've been home. So I'm looking forward to getting back to work on Monday. Actually, today is Sunday, so I'm recording this because I will actually, as you're watching this, hopefully be handing out devices to students at school. So I'm looking forward to having something to do other than petting and playing with my kitties. So anyway, I've got two books about cats, but before I start them, I wanted to make sure that I introduced you to my cats. So there's one cat right behind me. Her name is Jasper. She's a calico. Uh, calico cats are known for being super independent, uh, pretty strong willed. And she is a cat that basically did not go to kindergarten because she does not know how to play well with others. Now I've got two other cats and let me see if I can get them out. Now one of them is actually hiding underneath this blanket. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab some toys. Now the one that's hiding underneath the blanket, his name is George. And George is the most recent of the Kritzer kitties. He is part Maine Coon, which is like a really big fluffy ball of cat, but he doesn't look like it because we actually had to shave him. His fur gets really matted, so every once in a while he gets what they call a lion cut. And the lion cut, the lion cut is um, basically they leave their heads full of hair, but then their entire bodies are shaved down and he looks so skinny, but normally he looks super full. Um, the other cat we have is an orange, I think you would call him a tabby cat and he is huge. His name is Jack and he's like the size of a dog. So um, not only is he the size of a dog, but he loves doing dog things. Like he loves chasing um, balls. If you throw a ball, he'll run and catch it and bring it back. And he loves, for some reason, he loves hanging out inside of the sink. Uh, Jasper, I didn't mention, but she only drinks water from the sink. So the book that I'm going to read you also has a cat that only drinks from the sink. And then George is the paper eater. So anybody who's in my class, if you've ever gotten some graded work back that has maybe some bites out of the corner or a few little chunks missing, it's because George probably got to it. So uh, let me go get the toy and see if I can get Jack to come into the bedroom and then also to get George to come out from under the blanket. Hold on. Okay. So it doesn't take much. Normally they come out. Let's see if he's going to come out or not. I'm going to, let's see. So George likes the laser pointer. So if you can see there's, uh, I don't know that you can actually see that if I'm pointing it on the screen, but if I do this, you can see it. Come on, George. Come on out, boy. And here comes Jack. Come on. Come on. Come on right here. Okay. Of course, Jasper is the one who's playing with it right now, but come here, Jack. Let's see if it'll work or not. I tried pulling out all my all my game. So this is it. Come on, come on, come on, you guys. All right. So the book that I have for you guys is called "I Hate My Cats," and then in parentheses it's called "A Love Story." So there's Jack right there, sweetest little love bug, loves to be held, and then Jasper who just doesn't get along with any of them. And then I'm gonna lift George up because if not, I just don't think he's gonna be. Um, particularly cooperative. So that's my little lion cut, George. Super handsome boy. Uh, maybe they'll hang out while we read the story. So the book again is called I Hate My Cat, A Love Story by David Cowley. And then the illustrations are done by Anna Paroli. And I love the illustrations. They're kind of old fashioned, I would say. Now, this gentleman only has two cats. One that looks like George and one that kind of looks like Jack. So no Jasper in this one. So in this book, the orange tabby, her name is actually Ginger. Of course, now they're going to go drag the toys around. Ginger is the weird one. She plays with peas. There's a teeny little pea right there. I don't know if you can see it. She plays with peas. She purrs at artichokes and speaks to pigeons. She likes mint and chicken, but only the neighbor's chicken. She's 
amuse her, especially my shoes. And she only drinks water from the sink. And that's like Jasper, the calico that's at the very back playing with the, with the toy. She does not drink water from anything else. And we actually have a little water fountain that they, um, that they make especially for cats, but she likes it out of the sink. Sometimes if she feels like it, she leaves me little presents on the floor. And normally they're pretty good. I don't know how they'd manage to um, just know what to do with kitty litter boxes. They normally uh, leave everything in their kitty litter box, but every once in a while you'll find a little something left behind. Fred is the lazy one. He's right there. He sleeps most of the time on sweaters, preferably white ones, of course. He looks like George in the background there. When he isn't sleeping, he likes to rest on towels, obviously white ones, or in the sink. Just so weird how cats like to just roll themselves up and tight, like, little spaces. I know I have a salad bowl on top of my dining room table that Jasper loves to curl in. Ooh, now that the toy is out, they are just devouring it back there. We share the covers and the newspaper. Anytime I'm working on school stuff, even if I'm at the computer, Jack loves to be on my lap. Of course, I told you about George who loves to eat the paper. He is friends with the vase and the side table, but not the vacuum cleaner. He disappears whenever I turn it on. There he is, hiding in the pantry. He thinks he's good at hiding and that nobody can see him. He's kind of hidden behind some like sheer curtains. Ah. This page is a little stuck. There he is working. Looks like maybe he's some sort of an artist, like my Lena. And then of course, wherever you are, that's where the cats wanna be. And they love knocking things over. I have no idea what it is, but boy, they love being on counters and just swiping things down. It's just not fair. There's the cat eating the paper. When I can't take it anymore, I yell, stop it. And cats really get super scared, super alarmed by loud noises. So we don't yell at our cats very often, but boy, if a plant's ready to come down because they're playing with it, every once in a while we will, and it sure definitely gets their attention. There's the house, just a total disaster. It's been torn apart. Pillows are open, coffee's on the floor. By evening, I leave treats in their bowls to apologize. But when I go to sleep, they still haven't appeared. Then I turn off the light. In the dark, I feel something move, something heavy. You can barely see, we've got a couple of eyeballs here. And then what looks like a, a watch, really, or a clock, I should say. Really hard to see. Cats love sleeping next to you. They've forgiven me. Oh, how I hate them. Now he says, oh, how I hate them. But of course he doesn't mean it. He loves his cats. And that's the end. Kind of hard to see. That looks like my George right there. Hope you guys like that book. And I have another book. Uh, it's a little bit longer, so I might have to skip some of the pages. This one is also about cats, but instead of being written from the perspective of a human, it's actually written from the perspective of a cat. And it's actually written from the perspective of a kind of savvy or smart cat. So this one's called, It's All About Meow. Get it? It's all about me. And uh, one thing that I think is really kind of cool is that it's written and illustrated by Hudson Talbot. So pretty talented guy that he can actually write the book and illustrate it himself. Again, reminds me of some of my artists in my classroom that I know. All righty, so it's all about Meow, A Young Cat's Guide to the Good Life by Hudson Talbot. Welcome 
welcome to your new home, fellow felines. So now you've been weaned, congratulations. And it's Buddy who's doing the talking here. You're probably wondering, how did I get here? Where's the food? Who are those tall creatures staring at me? Here come some new little kittens arriving. Those tall creatures are called humans. Except for that one. He's called Here Boy. They think that they are your new mommies. They've got the food. So that brings us to you. You're probably feeling a little helpless. Yes, humans are big and loud and kind of scary, but look at them. They're staring at you and making goo goo noises. They want to make you happy. Now's the time to take control. You're probably saying, me? How? Me? How? There's Buddy. He's got a picture of a cat and he's got a picture of a human. So I'll just point out a couple of little things. So he says, this is us. This is them. And for example, for uh, eyesight, he's like, oh, laser like, but for humans, eyesight, dim. Hearing, perfect. Hearing, poor. Uh, let's see, tail, sassy. Tail, none. Body, needs covering. Body, gorgeous. Get the picture? They need our help. But enough about them. Let's talk about us. Ah, the wonders of being a cat. We're lean, mean hunting machines. The coolest of the cool. Check out our fabulous feline features. And again, I'll only point out a few. Eyes, day, night. Built-in sunglasses control light. This one I thought was kind of interesting and I did not actually notice that and I started paying attention after I read this book. Ears, pivot to pick up sounds like radar so their ears kind of turn depending on the direction of the sound. Hey, fatso, is what the mouse is saying. Tail, good for balance, great for attitude. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed but cats are really good at falling. So always landing on your feet. Okay, I'm walking along a rooftop. Oops, I'm falling. Just kidding. Oh, sort of. Looking for ground. Landing gear down. Relax. Prepare for another perfect four-point landing. So it's just remarkable how they always manage to land on their feet no matter where they're falling from. There's cat's rule, dog's rule. And then this is a little catwalk through history. Again, it's got a lot of information, so I won't share too much. Uh, but right here we have around 11 million years ago is when scientists speculate that cats first appeared. And then they lived in the wild until farmers started using them, um, I guess, as help around the farms hunting mice. So they were really, really helpful. So in Egyptian times, they were often pictured in a lot of their artwork because they were so important for maintaining the farms and the crops. But then around the 1300s, around the Dark Ages, people started to think that cats were evil and so they had a really bad reputation. And then around the time people started arriving from Europe here to the Americas, that's when they first introduced cats here. That's around 1600s, came to the New World, basically kind of helped hunt down mice on the ship and in the farms again. And then here, 1700s, it was really popular for fancy homes to have cats for pets, all the way to present day. So some people love dogs, some people love cats, some people love both. I love both, and I can't wait to have a dog one day. We just don't have one yet. Studies have shown the value of her therapy to the modern family. So there's everybody rushing around trying to get stuff done. Here's a family in need of purr therapy. Here's a family getting purr therapy. Any questions? So basically just having the kitties sitting on your lap purring is the most wonderful thing. Not a bad life, huh? We don't do tricks. We don't come when we're called. We eat and sleep when we want to. And yet they love us for it. Why? 
It's a little something I call catitude. It's our way of being our way. We make them smile and laugh and feel all warm and fuzzy because we are warm and fuzzy. I know when to turn on the charm or how to take a nap with style or how to purr your way out of trouble. When you're caught in the kitchen with a fried chicken in your paws. Catitude is the way we make the world our playground and turn a household from drab to fab. Putting our personal touch on everything from dinner dishes to the living room rug. It's a big job, but somehow, and I don't know if you can see, but their little kitty is vomiting on the rug and they do that a lot too because they lick their own fur. Ah, it just creates this messy little fur ball that they have to get out every once in a while. The system works. That buddy warming my chair and so tired he fell asleep. I'll just sit somewhere else. Goo goo mama, goo goo buddy. I wonder if buddy wants salmon or veal for dinner. Wait till buddy sees the fish I caught for him. Buddy, my role model. I think buddy needs more toys. To keep the system working, we must first master the language. I call it communicating. Get it? Cat communicating. Let's start with these simple phrases. High tail, hello. Low tail, goodbye. I don't see you, so you don't exist. Backside, nobody home. I love that. That's pretty funny. Whether you run into a mean cat, a nasty dog, or just want a good Want to look good for Halloween? It's important to know how to empower yourself with style. Back off. That's when cats um, get their tails and their hair on their backs to stand up. Put your back into it. Are you a scaredy cat or a scary cat? Tail higher. Once you've learned the basic of communicating, you're free to do your most important job. Play with your humans. Teach them these games for hours of family fun. Sit, stay, <laughs> fetch. This one's my favorite because the cat is knocking stuff off of counters and we do this all the time. Of course, they're not supposed to be on the counters, but when they do, they find whatever is on there and knock it down. In and out. Now my cats don't go in and out. They actually don't go out at all because we live on a canyon and it's full of coyotes. So I wouldn't see my cats again if I let them out. Pet the tummy, trap the hand. Oh yeah, that is completely accurate. So what they do, it's a sign that they like you if they show you their tummy. And so a lot of times you're like, oh look how sweet, they want me to pet their tummy. And then they attack your hand, always. Humans may forget that you are the center of their world. And there it just goes into all these different things. So all like sitting on the remote control, just lunging at you if you're pleasantly resting on the couch. Here's how to fix the problem and all the things that the cats might do. Some humans need special training to be reminded when it's dinner time. For faster service, let your eyes do the talking. What's for dinner? Well, that's a beginner, that's a rookie. I need food. Intermediate cat, please must have food. Advanced, and there is the expert. Put the chicken in the bowl, put the chicken in the bowl, put the chicken in the bowl. Kind of a bit of a hypnotic gaze. Oh, hold on. All right. Oh, he loves to play, my goodness. Okay, now you're distracting the boy. Dining out, it's fun. But don't try sharing it with your humans before bringing home your next trophy. Learn these do's and don'ts. Do catch. Don't catch. Do catch a mouse. Don't catch a gerbil. Do catch a rat. Don't catch a bunny. Do catch a fashion, fish in a creek. Don't catch a fish in a bowl. Do catch a snake but don't bring them in the house. Finally, my fellow feline, some words of wisdom. 
Keep your outside mild, but your inside wild. And sometimes we need to let our inner kitty out. That's what makes us cats. Fur, freedom, and our fabulous family. Yep, those are our crazy cousins. What a beautiful bunch of beasties. We must always remember who we truly are and where we came from. And when it's time for breakfast, it's a cat's life. Isn't a cat's life perfect? Anyhow, stingrays, so those are my cats, my cat books, and I hope to see you guys at Hanalei picking up your devices. And if you already have a device, don't forget to sign into Cloud Connect. You're going to have a lot of new instruction there. I hope you guys have fun with it. We've missed you so much, and I'm really looking forward to starting some Zoom meetings. So uh, from my furry little family to yours, hopefully you guys have some pets that you've been able to play around with during this time off. I miss you guys, and that's it for now. Aloha.